Thank you for tuning in to my channel. This is Rana Escobar with Everything Real Estate and Rana Escobar in my YouTube channel. Today we have a wonderful opportunity. We have one of the top performing agents in the country. Uh, Leo Pareja is, has been ranked number one agent and uh, number of units sold in 2010 for Keller Williams and consistently does real, real well on his production. So I asked him as a favor, we are at the Four Seasons Hotel in Washington, D.C. in a conference with NAREP, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals, and we are um, in a wonderful conference uh, lobbying for affordable housing for our community. So I took the opportunity to invite Leo and pick his brain for all of us. is a great opportunity to see what makes a great agent and what's going on in there and how we can borrow from, from that. So. Uh, Leo Pareja is here with us. Thank you, Leo. Thank you for having me, Ron. And uh, I just want to ask you a few questions to, to give our audience a little bit of uh, background. Um, how is your production? What kind of units you do or how, how do you define that? Sure. I've been a licensed realtor for 12 years. I uh, service the DC metro market. So that's DC, Maryland, and Virginia. For us, it's one metro market inside the Beltway. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my business has been pr pretty consistent in the four to six hundred units a year range, and that ranges between eighty and a hundred million dollars for about five years now. Okay, so for you guys that are watching this, I know that you think you didn't hear well, because the average uh, real estate agent makes about, I, I believe the nationwide statistic is six transactions per year. Uh, you said six hundred. Yes, I did. Transactions per year. Yeah, it's right. been averaging between four and six hundred. Okay, so you can see what type of volume we're talking about, what type of uh, tenacity, effort, success it takes to achieve that, and that's what we're gonna kind of dig into it a little bit. What motivates you to do this type of production? I, I was raised overseas, I didn't move here till I was 12, and you know, I, I say it over and over again, you know, poor people in this country have a house, a car, and mm -hmm. television. Poor people in third world countries, you know, it, food is the objective of the day. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I moved here when I was 12 years old and just realized the opportunity that everybody has in this country is just, I think if you don't take advantage of it every day, you're wasting an opportunity. We, you will live in a great country, right? I wake up every morning and uh, I write down the things I'm thankful for. And never once does, do I not write, I'm thankful for uh, living in the USA. So it's, it's funny that you say that. Um, what happens when you have a bad day? I'm sure not all your days are good. No, absolutely. And I actually say this quite a bit. I said 28, 29 days out of the month, I feel like Superman. And one or two days out of the month, you know, my, my wife knows that I need to be held and told everything's going to be okay because we are, we're all humans. We all have flaws and stuff happens to all of us. And it's just, I think the difference between failing and succeeding is actually getting back up. Mm -hmm. So I think the key there is to having a strong support group and you know, I think that's pretty much everything. Who surrounds you, who holds you accountable, whether that's personally or professionally, it's mm -hmm. the people you surround yourself with that make all the difference. So if you have a good support structure, whether that's friends or family, mm -hmm. who say, it's okay, get back up. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they can listen to your stories, but they don't enable them. That is wonderful. I always um, believe in, in this channel, uh, people have heard me say that, uh, when I interview agents and, and they talk to me and they lead with the question of what percentage am I going to make in commission, it throws me off because I always think that um, that is such a wrong question. Like the question should be what you just said. Who am I surrounded by? What kind of support will I get? What kind of motivation will I get? How can I get some of those amazing practices to stick to me and so that I can improve myself? And then everything else is secondary, I think, mm -hmm. right? The production or the money or whatever will just happen as a result. No, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's all an intention. If you, if you lead with service and providing value, mm -hmm. it all comes back to you and folds. Okay. Um, so what would you say to an agent that is the average agent that I just spoke about, somebody who does six or let's double that, 12 transactions, and they're, they're looking for a way to double that. Uh, and I know you're a very straightforward talker and I, I'm kind of uh, waiting to see this answer. So what would you no, say to that? So, so this and the, the national statistics are appalling in my opinion, just because 
I think what attracts people to real estate is the wrong idea. I hear people consistently say, I'm getting into real estate because I want the flexibility. Mm -hmm. I want the, the, the potential income. Mm -hmm. And the reality is to perform at a high level, there's no flexibility. It, it is actually the quite opposite. It's the consistency. It's the doing the difficult stuff that nobody wants to do on a regular basis that gets you to high levels of production. And when somebody says, I want to do, if anybody says, I want to do less than 100 deals, there's a hundred different ways to do that business, whether that's door knocking, cold calling, you know, sphere of influence. There's a hundred different niches that'll get you there. If you want to do mm -hmm. five, six hundred deals a year, mm -hmm. the market kind of dictates what that looks like. In a strong market, it's new construction. In a down market, it's REO. Mm -hmm. But at a, a, at a decent production, 50 to 100 units, there's a hundred different ways to do it. So before people say, I want to double my production, I say, well, let's talk about your production. What does that look like? What's your average price point? What's your average commission? Mm -hmm. Why, instead of doubling your units, why don't you double your price point? Mm -hmm. Same amount of transactions, more net income. So whenever I'm having a conversation with people about their business, I start asking a lot of questions about numbers. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to answer your questions if people don't know their numbers. Mm -hmm. What are your lead sources? What are your conversion rates? Mm -hmm. How do you track it? Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're doing good or bad? How do you know if the lead source you're investing in is worthwhile? Mm -hmm. if, you're not, if you can't track it, we can't even have a conversation about how do you double that. Mm -hmm. I, I get a sense that you're extremely analytical and uh, that leads to efficiency, right? Um, well, naturally, I'm not. And okay. you know, I've taken the AVA disc and, the, and Myers Brick. All of them say I don't have an attention to detail. Circumstances in life have completely changed my behavior, mm -hmm. and I've learned to focus on the things that are important to me. Because once you realize, you know, what is your passion, what gets you there, mm -hmm. then you realize what you have to pay attention to, even though you may not be naturally inclined to do it. I, I think uh, Muhammad Ali said. Uh one of his famous quotes, he hated training every day with a passion. He hated it every day for a very long time, but he loved being a winner, right? So you're telling me your natural tendency is not to have attention to detail, but you do it because that's what you got to do to get the type of success that you get. And, ha and have the right support staff. So for example, I have phenomenal support staff that can crunch numbers and then I'm looking at a report. And I'm really good at managing by reports because as, as long as I see the top level numbers, mm -hmm. I can predict cash flow and see where we're investing money and where we should not be investing money. Okay, so I'm an average agent, I do this type of production, you're saying, well, you should really be thinking about um, 100 units, think big, which is a big section of this channel, think big, and then track, be analytical, um, know what you're doing and what kind of results it's producing. So uh, I'll say a couple things to that. In order to make money at this business, you need leverage. Uh -huh. If not, you're going to work 80 hours a week and you're going to kill yourself, mm -hmm. which is not a sustainable situation. You'll have burnout, you'll, um, you'll jeopardize your family mm -hmm. and your personal relationships. That's why mm -hmm. I said, you know, you can't make money over the long term consistently without some systems and leverage. Okay. I don't work weekends. I don't work most nights. I don't pick up my phone after seven and my clients know that. And again, it, it goes back to setting expectation. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have leverage, you need the revenue in order to have leverage, mm -hmm. or if not, your career looks like this, where mm -hmm. you do four deals, then two months you're starving, then you get a bunch of activity and you do more deals and then you're starving again. Yeah, yeah, it has been the, the cycle. Um, and one more question for this video, because we like to kind of keep the video short. Uh, how important is mindset to, to your everyday block and tackle that you have been doing for a long time? Mindset is everything. As far as I'm concerned, you know, an event happens in life and how people see that event is really the interpretation. So being positive is a choice. I, I remember having a friend in college tell me, you know, you're delusional telling you all yourself, all the stuff you say to yourself. Yeah. And I said, that may be true, but your delusion sucks mm -hmm. because it's negative. So I choose to make up my own reality and you're choosing to make up own, your own reality. So I'd, yeah. I'd rather live in a positive one. So if you're gonna fool yourself, fool yourself into <laughs> greatness, right? Because, you know, it's, everything is what you choose mm -hmm. for it to be. So if, if you wake up, be positive, hang out with positive people versus mm -hmm. 
people who are very negative, they attract other negative people. And then that's how you behave and what happens to you on a daily basis. So do you have any sort of trick or exercise that you do to be aware? Because one, one of the things that I say is you need to be aware of what's going on and not just react to the world, but uh, try to proactively tackle things with the direction in a plan. So I wouldn't call it a trick, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's the word is awareness that you just said, you know. Mm -hmm human beings have this little voice inside their head mm -hmm. that is very negative. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, if that little voice was an external person, you would probably fist fight it for the things it says to you. <laughs> you know, you're too short, you're too tall, you're too yeah. fat, you're too skinny. I'm all that. All that <laughs> stuff. So you just need to be aware of when that voice is taking control and making decisions for you. Mm -hmm. and, and the word you said was very important is react. Mm -hmm. Most people move through life reacting. And you can hear it in their conversations. Oh, you won't believe what happened to me at work today. Or guess what happened? No, stuff doesn't happen. Events take place and then you choose how to react to it or how to create in that moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's all about creating and making a choice versus reacting to something that happened to me. Great. So there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoy uh, the interview with Leo Pareja and that uh, if you have any questions, Please subscribe to the channel and go down below. Ask your questions directly. I have access to Leo, he's a great friend. We can answer your questions. He can answer your questions directly. We're gonna link to his channel, to his video, so you can take advantage of that through the YouTube channel as well. This is a great opportunity to add value to you. You're watching this video, it's intended for you. It's not intended for the person next to you to be successful or those that are around you. It's intended for you. We all, as Leo said, can be successful, have the choice on how we, um, how we choose to approach things, right, and make it happen for us. Absolutely.